Hey there guys, it's finally happening. We're finally starting the fire alarm installation project in my house. That's right, it's not happening in this building, but in my house, we're gonna be installing a Notifier NFS 320C addressable commercial fire alarm system in my house to offer better fire protection than what's there. I made a video a while back explaining that this project was going to be happening and telling the, the brief information I knew. We're finally starting with the project and it's going to be a multi-part video and a multi-part project for sure. We have a lot of work. Today is going to be part one of the rough in. Rough in maybe even two or three parts because we have to rough in this entire house as right now there is nothing done for any fire alarm system to be installed. So we got to start pulling wire, installing boxes for detectors, pull stations, horns, strobes, mounting panel, mounting boxes for isolators, pulling all the wire, you name it. I actually already got started last night. I'll put in some pictures here where I had to get some fire alarm wire down into the first floor hallway, which is a renovation that was done to the house, but it used to be an open carport. So I had to fish through an exterior wall and I had to fish down this hallway by pulling out the pot lights and pushing the light cans up in the ceiling and using fish sticks, fish tapes, multiple fish tapes, two people coming from different angles, long drill bits to drill through the side and then and then I was able to get another one in the return air. After probably an hour or two of fishing, we finally have a line pulled and uh, that's what today where, where we left off and what we're gonna be continuing on today. So for those of you that don't know, a brief rundown on my house. It is a two story house with around 2,400 total square feet, 1,200 per floor. And then there is also a slightly kind of detached building that is underneath of the sun deck. It's not accessible from in the house but it's underneath the deck and is connected to the house. So we have five bedrooms, uh, three bathrooms, two kitchens, two living rooms, two corridors, and uh, some closet spaces and a furnace room and a crawl space under the stairs and an attic space. So this house is going to entail quite a few devices being installed, which you will see in this video and the following videos where each bedroom will get a smoke, smoke in each corridor, smoke at the top of the stairwell, Heat detector in the furnace room, heat detector in the garage, and a heat detector in the shed underneath the deck, as well as two high temperature conventional heat detectors in the attic, which will require a monitor module to be installed. This is going to be running class B NAX, and I will be installing isolators on the SLC before it goes out to each floor to isolate each floor from each other. So if one goes down and gets short, it doesn't take the whole SLC down with it. All right, so before we get into the video and look at what is the scope of work to do, let's see what I did the previous night. This was many hours spent of fishing in this challenging spot to try and connect the downstairs hallway that was renovated, which was not even originally part of the house. It was an open carport, so we had to drill one hole one way with the extra long drill bit to get the fish tape you see we're pulling out, and then snag it with this other fish tape ran 90 degrees to the other one that we were trying to pull out using this air uh, return duct as a way to get into there. So this, you can see the, the tape that we pushed into there. And that is the one that we hooked and pulled through on the other side where we can then connect pull string through. This was the most challenging part of the house because this was sort of an addition because it used to be a carport. So we had to fish this through an exterior wall. But once we were down here, you can see I could now make a hole in the ceiling for our detector location. I ended up only making one hole that will have to be patched later on and that's that one that I put in the corner. I made sure to not drill the hole super tight to the corner so it can still be patched somewhat easily. As far as the other holes, I used the recessed cans and dismantled the cans and you can take some screws out and push them up in the ceiling and that made this whole process kind of possible without damaging more stuff. Anyways, let's get into the video. Let's head in the house and see what is done and see what has to be done. I know, I know, I know. Okay, look, we will get into the video soon, but I think we should clarify and go over what our end goal actually is here. This is a look at the second floor. The scale may not be perfect, though it's pretty close. What are we looking at here? All of the red circles are smoke detectors. Blue square is sounder strobe. Green square is pull station. And black square is enunciator. So that is the end goal on the second floor. Let's take a look at the first floor now. Okay, now let's take a look at first floor, level one. Same thing with all of the red circles are smoke detectors, but we have a couple different colors going on. Green 
squares are regular horn strobes. Blue strobe is our sounder or sounder strobe, which that dr drawing where it's been put isn't actually accurate with how it turned out. I can speak for this because I'm editing this after the fact. Black circles are heat detectors and black square is the fireland panel, which it will not be outside. That is just how it ended up on here because I ran out of room on this, on this drawing of this floor plan. And then red square is pull station. But all three devices in that sh detached shed building, sort of detached, it's underneath the deck, but there's no entry or access directly from the house. You have to go outside. That will be wired at a later date. That won't be in this video. This video is going to cover the first floor rough in and somewhere down the road we will rough in the second floor and after that at the very end it's lowest on the priority list will be to possibly add some fire alarm devices in that building under the deck which that may or may not ever happen that's just how i spec'd it and planned it for now anyways guys let's for real get into the video this time uh, now, you, now that you have an idea of what's happening for devices let's uh let's not get too crazy here and let's just start with the first floor because uh and that's all I'm worried about at the moment is get the harder floor done with, which is the first floor as we don't have an attic above us. It requires lots of fishing and uh, more um, unique methods of getting things in places than just simply dropping a box wherever. Brief rundown, I'll start at where the source is going to be as far as the panel. Panel is going to mount on this wall here. We'll need two isolators and uh, we will need a uh, detector in this room heat detector in here, duct detector on the furnace, and this bedroom is getting a smoke in it somewhere. This living room, or just going into this living room, is going to get a smoke here, and uh, kitchen here, stairwell here. I'm gonna put a smoke in this corridor here down towards this end at the laundry room, and in this garage. I need to get a heat detector up here, which leads us to how we're going to get into this bedroom, as we have another bedroom here, which uh, this one also needs a smoke in it. Upstairs, I showed you in the map, but that's a whole different story for now, but I did have to go up there to fish this yesterday. This is what I showed you guys that I worked on, so I fished, I took out these, uh, these pot lights here, fished this guy here down into this hole I cut out for a smoky, put a little pancake box in there. And then this side was challenging because it goes through the wall this way, then through what used to be an exterior wall, then into the return air duct space, which this fire alarm cable is plenum rated. So it's okay to be in that return air space. And then it makes its way somehow, I'm not sure how, I can't remember how I got it there, but it makes its way back to there, which from there, all of our home runs uh, I can go back to the fire alarm panel there. And uh, since it's kind of first floor still, pull station needs to go here. Annunciator needs to go there. Eight conductors or whatever the annunciator needs. Here is this return air grill here where you can see the string was pulled where I had to make hole through this uh, triple two by eight. So then I drilled a hole with a long drill bit through this way. So I had to stick one fish tape through there, one through there, make a hook on each one, catch them both, pull it through. And then this is where it goes down to that other closet there. So this is all strung up here and uh, just needs wire. Some fire alarm cable here. This, I think this, yeah, this will definitely be enough for the first floor, maybe enough for the whole house. We'll see, this is a start few hundred feet there for sure at least. Uh, got some pull string there, just picked up another spool today. I got this crappy stuff here. Whole bunch of boxes, there's more in the garage out there if I need them, that's not far. Picked up 10 pancake boxes today or half inch ones. Shouldn't need all 10 of them, but never know what's gonna happen. Those are here, got more pull string there. And then, uh, 10 pancakes. All right, let's get underway with uh, part one of fire alarm system rough in in the house. First, I'm gonna try and fish from this detector location into this garage. I'm gonna get a good 
long drill bit on here. Well, I'm going about this all wrong. I don't really need to come from this side. It would probably be easier if I go from this side. I'm starting off with this video making me look like an idiot already. By the way, this is from uh, getting in a fight with an enunciator and the enunciator won. Uh, it seems like almost every time I do a fire alarm install, my hands are messed up or something. Last time it was a scooter crash and I never hear the end of it in the comments. For now, I'm just going to pull a string through since I don't have my wires around yet. Since first I have to go all the way back and my SLC and NAC are going to be separate cables, I believe. So string for now. stuff off or it will go missing. Now that our SLC will come from that end of the house to here and then through there, that's where we're going to then go into this bedroom here. Measured in this room here, this detector is 45 to center, which is about where I want to put my detector to make sure I get the right stud spacing up there or joist spacing. I measured the same 45 off this wall and put a little SD right there where I want to fish right down the ceiling that way. And I can see through this hole right here that that will get me above the drywall. like to get that back because then I can potentially plug the hole back up. Now that we've got a hole going through there, I'll use the dust bowl and a uh, four inch bit and uh, make our detector hole in the ceiling. Dust bowl on. You were watching me with that whole saw and was like nick why are you going so slow this is why because uh you don't want to go plunging in or you could end up cutting something this one this one's almost another pancake box all right i'm going to run some uh fish sticks here uh don't mind that uh that circuit line <laughs> 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 run some some fish sticks down uh through there and hopefully we'll be able to catch it at that hole Picking just the, the two sticks should do it. Let's 
probably the smoke detector box we're hitting. And uh, just like that, as I predict predicted, we are hitting the smoke detector box. There we go. This, I'm just gonna run a four conductor. This is just SLC. We're gonna run this 18 gauge. I actually have all these little old chunks of wire that I'm trying to use up here too. Try and find something that is an adequate size. Okay, we've got some four conductor tied on here. So uh, this guy should be able to be pulled back now. We are pulled through here and we are in this bedroom here. That should be enough. That leaves us about six inches from the front of the box. Now we can give it a little extra. We got lots of wire here. Here. All right, I won't put a detector up today as we're not nearly at the installation phase, but I will wire it to get it ready. As you can see, this is pretty stable in there. Okay, I've coiled the blue up since the blue won't be used on this device. I want to get this cable down there as far as I can, so I have one more stud, so I'll use the long drill bit to drill that out. have the long drill bit through there I'm going to drill a four inch hole with the hole saw half on this stud here so I can easily put it back that way it gives me an access hole to uh, hopefully be able to tie a string through somehow okay I drilled that out here and I drilled a notch into that stud so I should be able to slip everything by there string is tied on there now let's try and pull it back there is in fact a little hole in the end of this extra long drill bit that is meant for you to be able to hook a wire in or a pull string to do exactly what i needed to do here to use the drill bit to make the hole and then instead of having to come back and run a fish stick you can just use that hole when you pull your drill bit back out however sometimes it's a pain because you actually have to rotate the drill bit to get it out which can be plan is here is i'm going to run this in a short piece of emt just to protect it from mechanical damage, it is supported there. And go into 1110 box mounted on there, where I will come out of it on some way out over to a, uh, a uh, heat detector. This will hopefully be the only area in the house where I'm going to have to use EMT. Everything else I should be able to fish in. This is sort of a last resort to put things in conduit 
though it's a solid wood beam there which is load bearing I don't really have much choice here other than to go surface mount conduit and it is only a garage so it will do at the end of the day it's not that bad that right there is going to be SLC into the bedroom which is going to come out of this side of the box and then out of this I have to put a filler in the top but out of this side I will bring uh, probably the top one I'll bring out and over to a heat detector and then the middle one I will run over to a horn and that one I want to leave on the bottom future because you don't want your conduit crossing over to maybe come down to a pull station on that wall. Uh, I can think I can see that all working out nice. First before we put the box up I'm going to have to put a uh, 4040 Lumex connector on the back and then we'll have to bring NAC and SLC over. So SLC I'm going to run from that box that we're just working on to here in a uh, 18.3 and then because this building's a little bigger than the garage I'm going to actually uh, run a 14 gauge for voltage drop on the NAX probably way overkill but I have this three conductor 14 gauge fire alarm so that's why that's why it's so much thicker than this even though it's the same conductor count and this will this won't stop at this junction box it'll be pulled all the way back to somewhere in the corridor here where our where our uh, horn, horn short or low frequency sounder will be. But because this garage is insulated, I'm going to put a regular horn strobe in here. I should have actually pulled another pull string through. For any of the really long runs, like that one I pulled last night that was actually challenging to fish, I'll pull another pull string. This one I'm not too worried about. It took me two minutes to fish it. I can fish it again. Okay, we need uh, we need this kicked down a little bit, so we'll flip it this way and kick it up by about an inch, maybe three quarter. I think that should do. And then, then we need to do an offset on the other end for our box. So we kick down there to the ceiling and kick down there for our box offset. That will mount on a octagon.
Probably don't need it, but I'm gonna throw in one strap right here. Here for this, we're going to need a box offset for this end, and then the other side is going to need probably about a one one inch. We'll probably have to kick this whole end out, probably an inch and a quarter, I'd say. Is going to be our horn strobe or horn or whatever ends up there this will be the Alright, we can run our SLC from this detector location here. This is some of the 14 gauge. You can see right there, 14 gauge. don't think voltage drop would become an issue, but I have this 14 gauge wire, so I might as well use it on the max instead of never using it anywhere. Okay. I will explain this later on in the video, but I actually am doing the wrong thing right here. I pulled a four conductor. And by four conductor, I mean really three conductors you can actually use because you can't use the ground in it because you need that as the equipment ground. In this case, you wouldn't really because we have the EMT, but I want to keep the colors normal and I don't want to start using a green as one of my one of my conductors that I'm used to carry communication. So I will replace it with a five conductor. I, for some reason, didn't think about that this wasn't the end of the circuit. For some reason, I had it in my head that it was the last device, but indeed the bedroom smoke is the last one, not that one, so it still needs four wires to be used to carry the carry the communication as SLC into the detector and SLC back out because I, Aaron, I'm not T-tapping this. Even though it's addressable and it would be monitored, you still don't T-tap because if you've ever tried to troubleshoot a T-tap addressable system, it is more of a pain than a regular. Okay, so a little rundown on the setup here. I actually had to re-pull that because I first did that in a four wire thinking I was just going to use the two wires forgetting that that's not the end of the loop. We still have to go to the bedroom. So I quickly re-pulled a true five conductor. So I will, because I will need to use all my colors there. And we have our 14 gauge in here for our horn. And uh, everything is labeled properly this time with this system. So there's 14 gauge. Garage AV, that is NAC in, so that's easy. And then um, garage heat, bed smoke, and this one you can't really see, but it says SLC in. So is where we go, is we come from the SLC in, and then we go through this detector, and then once the detector's on, it'll go back, and then tie in to the bedroom. So 
we're not t-tapping because we're still doing a full proper loop. No t-taps, it's still a proper loop. Even if it's addressable, you can't t-tap, it'll make it a nightmare to troubleshoot anything if something goes wrong. So it's always easier to have a proper loop you can follow out. So anyways, this can all tuck back up now and I will put our cover on. There it is. Okay, everything is tucked back in there, NAC and SOC. Cover can go on. Okay, this takes care of one of the somewhat more time consuming parts as now we are all fished into that bedroom. That's all tied in. Garage is all roughed in. Now we can be done with this whole area until it's time to put devices up, which will be a while yet. We still have a whole house to do. We have just scratched the surface. Let's uh, work on the rest of this. I think first, well, I would like to get the knack pulled down, but I can't pull the knack until I pull the SLC. So I think I'll grab some more uh, 182 for our SLC and do a big pull. By the way, I have all these labeled how long they are. You see that one's 60 feet, which we might actually need a pretty long one. Actually, this one's 40, but that's, I wanna keep that for bells only. That's 21 feet. Um, that's smaller stuff. That'll be long enough though, cause we got a big run. We gotta go from that box there and then the next device isn't until, well, depends what way you look at it. Could be this smoke up here, or it could be that front door pull station. Either way, this one was a 25 footer that I ran for the neck, which is perfect because our horn's right there, and uh, you can see that will work well, but we're gonna need a lot longer for the SLC. This off-colored one might be the perfect one here. It is a three conductor, which is all we need for the SLC. 18 gauge, 37 feet. I think that should do it. I'm gonna. I'm just trying to use up all of this wire I've got before I open up any new spools. I want to really get rid of some of this because it's just been chilling for a long time. So uh, it'll sleep in this bedroom for a while, I think. Won't be able to use all of it on the system, but we'll uh, use it as effectively as we can. Plan is here to hook on this SLC and this knack, the SLC will pull from this box where there'll be a smoke detector will join to this SLC. The knack's not gonna be interrupted. It's not even gonna be in the box. I just need the box, so pull point for now. And then we'll pull it to here. And once we pull it to here, we can uh, disconnect this string. We'll pull a new string in, and then we'll hook to this string, which just is the scary one where we have to pull through this challenging area into this area of the house. As I said, I'm also gonna pull new pull string through. Try and keep this pull string too. This this uh, green and yellow stuff, this is the good stuff. That on the floor there, that's the crap stuff. I don't think it's in frame, but it's crap. So we'll take the end of this. And then the string I'm gonna tie on separately. I don't want it making anything all slippery up in here. Here. And that we will pull until it stops, which is right there. And the zone we will pull until we leave just enough there for our box, which is probably about that much. All right, so I'll put our box in here, our slim box, pan box, pancake box. This is the SLC going over there. So we'll cut that back.
Just to make things clear here, these pancake boxes aren't my go-to. You may think they are in this video as I keep needing to use them as I just keep getting this luck where I keep running right on the stud, which is where these are good to use, or the joists I should say. They actually are good though if you need something heavy to support because they're pretty strong. Okay, that now has this entire end of the building as far as downstairs pretty well done as everything is now pulled back to here. So now we just need to pull it a little bit further by uh, pulling it back through all the way. If you keep making loops like this, it'll get tighter when it gets pulled on. So there we have four loops like that. So that's already, that's super strong like that. will just pull tighter, the tighter you pull on it. So that's good. So I don't want this one coming off. And if you secure the tail, then it can't get loose. So now I can disconnect our pull string and the other one that this one here is going to keep pulling because I need it to pull it down the other way. So this pull string can get tied off. Easy. Keep an eye on it if it gets stuck or anything. Okay, that should be it. That's NAC and SLC now into this closet, so it goes all the way through that return air, through this whole funky thing, through up there, and then down to the garage and that device box there. I think maybe I will staple these down over here. I've now have this stapled in a few spots, so that looks better. Now figuring where I'm gonna put my sounder strobe, and uh, Right here is where I'm gonna to have to put it, which is further down this way of the house than I wanted to, because that's a big stretch that way without anything. I'm just gonna put it here, but then there's a big old header that runs through here. So I've got a line mark there. It has to be, the strobe has to be between uh, two, two meters and 2.4 meters off the ground, or 200 to 240 centimeters, or 2,000 to 2,400 millimeters, I believe. So that's marked just above the minimum height because I don't want to go much higher. And uh, I honestly don't know how I'm going to fish wire to it, but I'm going to figure that out as we go, I guess. And uh, this is getting to be not much, but uh, well, I'll try and make it work. Worst case scenario, we have to make a splice.
I shoved a piece of fish tape in here and uh, it's actually nice because it rides in the bottom of the duck. And I don't know if you can see it, not really from there, but we can see it. You can see it right there. I was able to slide it over. I'm not sure where exactly it's coming from, but you can see it's right there. And that's where my fireline cables drop down. As far as how we're going to get the initial feed back that way to the panel, I don't know. And as far as I don't like how far down this is down the hallway, I think my solution, the easiest, less, most non-destructive, would be to uh, probably eventually punch out the back of that and put another um, low frequency sounder up here in this corridor so we'll have two down here. Maybe I could set two to low volume instead of one to high might be the way to do it. We'll see. I got the fish tape over and the fish is caught. Hoping maybe I will actually be able to pull it into the box. <laughs> if it actually not to go to, into the box, that'll be a different story. Used a little bit more wire. It's uh, it's gonna, <laughs> it's gonna be really tight, but uh, I'll take that over resplicing it. It's still legal. We're still gonna have four from the f yeah. We're still legal. We just took some measurements. This return duct up there, that edge is 29 inches out from that wall, which on. This here only brings us to like right here from that wall, 29. So we seem to have a void area over here, which is great because maybe I can run my knack through here. And since that could be a little challenging without access, I'd have to somehow squeeze my body up there, which would be difficult. I could put my smoke detector that I require outside of this sleeping area right here. And still kind of close to the kitchen, but it's a lot further than that one was. And uh, I, I still would rather it be here than in one of these high spots. Because I feel like, yeah, sure, the smoke's going to rise to the high spot. But um, if it's right here on this high spot, it if it's outside of the bedroom, the smoke might not get there that quickly. This one here I need to be quite careful as there's power, data thermostat wires, everything is running right here. So as soon as I get through, I might not even go through all the way, I might just break it out. No, I, I don't, it's not structural, structural, but it's still holding up this thing, so. Probably shouldn't go too deep in there. For this fish here, I had to shove one fish tape with a hook in it from our low frequency sounder box and shove it up and it kind of hit the bottom of the duct and then I was able to catch the end of it with another fish tape with a hook on it that I could put into the ceiling from my detector location. I know it kind of messed up around the detector, but the base should cover it. Okay, that wasn't an easy one to get it to bite either, but when I shoved up the one fish tape with a hook on it, made a hook on this one. I was able to shine some light up there and you can just see the duct where it slides along the bottom and eventually I hooked it. I actually hooked it probably like 10 times but I kept hooking it with another wire. So just between two hands maneuvering them slowly. Probably need to go to the chiropractor for my neck now. Um, I got him. So uh, that's awesome. I've got that fish stick up in the ceiling there. 
And if we go to the furnace room, it is strung up. And I'm gonna pull it through. This will be used to pull NAC and SLC. This is the SLC that we pulled way down that hallway. And originally I was planning to uh, splice it in here and then and then go off of there down to that front door pull station. But that was before I realized I had to put another pancake box in, which I don't have room to splice. So instead, this is going to go directly to that, that uh, front door pull station and we'll make a splice in there. And then I will run SLC from the furnace room to here and then from here out to that pull station and that's where then this loop going down the hallway will be picked up. So this is going to get shoved up. Shoved up here in some way, some manner. Probably like that. Can you hold that there? Thank you. And then I will come up over here and potentially Grab the target. Okay, hang on a second, actually. Um, so I'm going to grab onto it with my fish tape here. Now, can you pull it down? Okay, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, let it go. Oh, yes. As far as the knack to tie onto there to go back to the furnace room, this 21 footer of again, the 14.3, that'll be sufficient. This can just go in the closet for now since that's going to go to the front door pull and then I need to run another from the front door pull back to this box and then from there, back to there. Gonna pull it at this end. Oh, it, was, oh, it almost disappeared. Um, you know what? Back her up. Back her up. I forgot to add a pull string. Pull string is added, so we'll try this again. Okay, I'm through here. How much cable do you got? Now uh, switch this fish tape to the other side where I can finish pulling this knack through, which will be our knack feed into that guy there. Also drilled a new separate hole up there, not that you can see it. There you can see it. Separate hole. All right, I'm gonna enter these into our box here. Okay, so where we're at now is the knack is complete as far as adding anything in the future, but that's later. So knack is here, knack's back to the panel room. So SLC is from the panel room and SLC is complete up to this closet. 
where it needs to get ran to the front door pull station, as well as the SLC needs to get continue, continued from this device to the front door pull station. So I'm gonna try and get a fish tape from this box through this duct area over to there so I can pull my wire through. All righty, there you go. One more smoky box installed. Now that this guy is all done up here. I think I'm now going to do that uh, horn, horn spot in the hallway. While this time lapse plays, I want to have a little discussion about my plans with the Knack Circus because I know a lot of people are going to say, you need to put something in each bedroom. Well, the, the issue with that is, is number one, it's a lot more costs and it takes away from the aesthetics of the bedroom. So for those two reasons, I want to just do hallway devices since you don't need a visual in the rooms themselves. As long as we're over 75 decibels in the rooms, we are completely compliant. Not to mention, this is a retrofit system and there was never anything before. But even if there was, we only need 75 decibels in the room. Or if the ambient is within that 75 decibels, then we need to be 10 decibels over ambient. So I'm thinking with hollow core doors and non-insulated walls, we will be able to get that 70 decibels or 75 just fine. Okay, here we go. This is the front door light switch. So the pull station will be lower. And probably right about mid here. So I've got this, I've got our two three wires. Well, actually one's a four wire, I think. Ran through here, through here, down, through all of these joists. As you see, there's a lot of extra. So it goes in up there and uh, it runs through there, through in there, all the way down. So I'll staple it up nice over here. And this isn't probably, I don't know, I might leave a little bit to uh, to be able to cut it some, somewhere if we ever wanted to add any more devices in here. If we leave enough for a box, we'll coil up maybe two feet of it. Okay, I've now pulled all the wire through. Um, so as you can see, while well, the one stopped, this one stopped right here, which is already more than enough. But the other one has lots to go. So okay, that's all of it right there. So as you see, for the pull station going right there, this is tons, um, but it's what I did is I stapled them like this. Obviously this isn't permanent, but I stapled this here with about two feet extra. That way, once it's permanently stapled, I can toss this up somewhere just so we have enough to still break it up somewhere and make an extra splice because uh, I can see maybe someday if I want to add anything in this area of the house this is a good central point to be able to tap into. So uh, that's why I wanted to do that, just to future proof it a little bit. So uh, let's decide where we're gonna put our pull station box up there. One thing though, before I can put this pull station in is I need to actually figure out where the enunciator is going first because the enunciator is harder to move and it's going to kind of dictate where the pull station mounts. So for now, we're gonna figure out this enunciator. This is a, what is it, LCD, LCD 2-80. I believe I'm going to need six connections to it. I'm going to run it terminal. And uh, this has a box which is in the house. I just came out here to show you guys this. It's got this cover on it here. And uh, the box, there's the keys for it. The box is in the house. Okay, this is the eight conductor I'm going to run. This stuff is black because it's actually rated to be in the ground but uh, it is an eight conductor and I need six for the enunciator. So this should be all good. I'm hoping that's there. That was extremely easy. I just kind of fed it through and the slight little bloop, bloop, wiggle it up and down. It bumped over all of the obstructions, I believe. It's gonna be on the other side this time. String and eight conductor. 
are tied on to this guy so you can pull back now. Alrighty, I've got all of this eight conductor pulled over here as much as I believe I need and now I'm gonna run it down the same way as I did that SLC wire. So this LCD 2-80F, I believe that's the model number, takes six different wires to power it. Two are for power and then there is a tra transmit and a receive, I believe, as far as data communication. So six wires in total, four of those are communication, two are power. down there. Alright, cool. When I cut this hole here, I aligned it purposely close to the top so this box has something that I can screw into. However, on the side here, I also want to put this block of wood on this side of it. This side I don't have room because of this, these wires here, but as long as I can get on one side, maybe I'll be able to put a small piece on that side. There we go, let's get a little bit more strength. I'm now going to uh, mount this enunciator box here. Okay, that has the enunciator box all uh, mounted and installed. Stop! Stop! Get it! Okay, now I'm going to get that pull station mounted. So the pull station has to be between uh, 1,050 millimeters to 1,150 millimeters. That is the, the current code. So 1,050 is right here, or 105 centimeters, and 1,150 is right here. So that's uh, for uh, wheelchair accessibility, the new heights, because uh, someone's totally gonna take their wheelchair up here. But uh, that's the same way it is no matter what. It makes no sense.
Okay, this has our pulse station and our enunciator roughed in at the front entry. Which, uh, this is about as close to upstairs as we will get in this video. But, uh, we still have more things downstairs to do. Well, that almost has the basement done. Smoke there, pulse station there, enunciator ran, um, horn... Smoke there, smoke in that bedroom, heat in there, horn down there. Um, other than adding a, a strobe in the bathroom, which this area of the house may be quite challenging, if not impossible. So we may have to do without. Um, it is what it is. Yet uh, this system isn't legally required to be here. This is all going above and beyond for extra safety. So it is, it's fine. We have downstairs NAC, Annunciator, SLC. But I'm gonna need to run another SLC that will have to tie in. And I'm gonna run it up there because you may notice we haven't done anything for smoke detection in this bedroom. And uh, as far as getting up into that ceiling up there, I think that's fairly challenging as all the joists run this way. However, we have, last time we ran everything down our return air which you saw how handy that is. This is our supply air, which I'm thinking I will be able to get down there and we can drop in a smoke detector. I don't want it right over top of the bed, but we'll put it sort of close to the front entrance. Obviously we don't want it in the door swing too, or the door will hit the smoke detector head. Uh, there's one sitting here actually. And uh, I think it'll hit. Yeah, that would be a problem. So I think if we put the smoke detector right around here, that would be uh, quite good. Just seems weird to have it in the middle of the room right over the bed by the door makes more sense. And uh, also then I'd have to cover up the bed if I was gonna drill it over there, which ain't nobody got time for that. Maybe we can finally get another detector where we won't need a pancake box, but with how it's been going, my area is turning into quite the disaster down here of tools and material. Oh well, what can you do? Clean it up now. Where does Nick want to drill a hole? There's one there. I think we're pretty well in the clear right here. We can use a real box. I'm looking at home, man. We're looking at home. That's looking through there, if anyone's wondering. I see light. Oh crap, this is gonna be easy to fish. What's down this way? Oh man, it goes for miles. If I was to even attempt to get a bathroom strobe, this is the duct I would try and run a knack down this side because I wouldn't bother trying to cross that knack over. It'd be too difficult. But this goes down. I think it goes for quite a ways because the ceiling is dropped in there. Not sure if it's dropped quite that low, but it might be possible to get one in this bathroom that way. I would have to do more investigating. Could probably pop one of those cans out to take a look actually. But that's not the priority. It's just to get done the essential stuff in the basement so we can move to the second floor. And then once the whole system's done, that's when extras can start being looked into. 
This camera spot here seems pretty good. I think I'm going to show it. This might be quite an easy fish, but never say that because that's when it gets really bad. I don't know why, but this seems so exciting not having to use a pancake box again. get more fish sticks. I only have three right now. I could always borrow some from the guys at work. Okay, that's probably there. Yes, it is. We are more than there. We are there and then some. Man, I was going to the neighbor's house with this thing. This one will need to run an actual five conductor because I use the four conductors in place of a three wire since they have the blue I just won't use. But if you use the green, then you don't have an equipment ground. So we can't really use them for ones we actually need four wires. So uh, when I can't use that one, this is a bunch of big stuff. That's big stuff. This feels promising. That's, that's five conductor, 17 feet of it. That might be pretty good, actually. I think I'll go with 17 feet since we'll need to travel this distance, which isn't that bad, but then we'll need to get over to wherever I mount my uh, heat detector in here because I'll probably just use that as the splice box. There's no sense of you putting in another box when I'm going to have an SLC component in here anyway, so I'll just make the splice of these two SLCs at that heat detector location. Okay, we're tied on. I have a pull string tied on too. Not that we need it to repull this distance. I mean, you saw how easy that was to fish, but I guess if we ever need to pull something in the future, then we only need to then we only need to come back to uh, that detector head that we could theoretically remove. Decided to leave us. It's okay, I didn't tie it on that well. As I was just saying though, the pull string isn't that necessary here, so, so since that is the case, I'm not going to bother re pull it. If I need it again, then chances are I'll have to take this out anyway, so we'll just fish it again. You saw how easy that was to fish. Thinking about this time, my buddy was at this school. Not the school he we went to, it was a private school. We were just riding our bikes around and there they had these goats at the school. So on a Saturday and the school had these goats that stayed outside. And my uh my buddy was trying to pet the goats and they uh they stole his bike glove. And then when he went to get it, they started biting him. I don't know if he ever got it back. I don't know why I'm thinking of this right now, but I can't get my head off this time. My buddy got bit by this goat at the school. It was the weirdest thing they had goats there, but it was, it was so funny when it bit him. Yeah, I'll turn over. Yeah. 
I've just mounted this detector box up here. I put that two by four in. This is going to be for my uh, furnace room heat detector and uh, fire panel room. Okay, this is where we're at with this here. So this is going to be from the isolator. And then this is out to the bedroom. One of these is just hanging down there will be for a duct smoke. And one is the SLC out. As you can see, they're labeled duct detector, SLC in, bedroom. And then this one's about to just be labeled SLC out. Okay, brief rundown on this before I close it up. SLC in splices into bedroom smoke detector. We always use black and red for the in feed and the blue and the brown for the out feed. So we are coming from positive negative SLC into this box and then it will go in to the five conductor going to the bedroom smoke. And because we're wiring this, we're not T-tapping we're still wiring it as a loop. It's not class A, meaning it doesn't return to the panel, but it's one constant wire without any taps off of it. So we go into the five wire to that bedroom smoke, then we come back from the return to the bedroom smoke on the blue and the brown, and then we go into the red and the black on the five wire going to the duct detector, and then we return from the duct detector on this blue and brown. And then this is our SLC out. So let me just put this all together here. So then at the end of the day, we are left with just our SLC out and our SLC returning from the duct detector. So it comes in here to the bedroom smoke, back to here, through the duct detector smoke, then back to here finally before going out on the SLC out. But you notice it's not put together. That's because our device will put this together. We will put black and blue under one terminal and brown and red under one terminal completing the positive and the negative here, which will then complete the loop and the SLC will go all the way through all the devices. All right, so SLC, this will just need to go into an isolator module. I'm not sure how I'm gonna wire up the isolators yet. I know, I know I'm gonna wire them. I'm not sure how it's gonna physically look. That is everything coming out of this box here. And I ran my other wire down there and around with everything else to the duct detector. Right now it's just sitting down here because I'm not exactly sure how it's going to go up. But you can see all of the fire alarm cables running up there. So yeah, this is how we're looking. Alrighty guys, well, first floor is roughed in, so... First video is done too. I think this is a good place to end it. I'm sure this one's getting pretty long. I haven't edited it yet, so I'm not sure where we're at for a time mark, but I'm thinking we're probably getting up there in probably as far as I want to take this video. And uh, there will be more though, so don't worry. I think we'll probably have at least one or two, probably one more rough in video. The downstairs was actually the most challenging to rough in second floor other than getting up to second floor once our risers upstairs onto the second floor it should be so much easier we have an attic we can drop down wherever we want though we do have more devices we have one two three more bedrooms and one two hallway devices or sorry common area devices which is the same amount as the downstairs however we also have a monitor module to put in and we have attic heat detectors to put in so that'll be different or to rough in for now and then the devices we'll get to later on once the whole system's rough and I don't want to start putting devices up until the system is all good ready to do drop a horn strobe or sounder strobe I should say upstairs and what else do we have to do we will need to set our isolator boxes and the panel can the can of the panel the panel panel the actual panel 
and then before we put the guts in it and get all that fixed in and once all the mechanical physical electrical conductors and cables are in place that's when we'll start putting in panels like actual brains of the panel putting in the 320 putting in the enunciator finishing the enunciator putting up pulls putting up horns or sounders horns horns or uh smokes heat sorry i can't get that out putting in that duct detector we got lots of work left to do so i think we'll have at least one or two more rough in videos and then probably another video of doing devices programming and probably and then definitely another one for verification so don't worry this is just the start of it so uh yeah that's where i'm gonna end this one i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did make sure to give it a thumbs up and also if you do have any comments or questions you can put them below but many of them may have been answered in that my last video i made of my project planning and they may be answered in the next video and there's some things that i just won't know yet until they're done any of these guys like i said hope you enjoyed if you do enjoy my channel make sure to subscribe and if you are interested i do have an instagram account at pickle 700 for bonus content and content posted earlier than you'd see it on the youtube channel that sort of thing Alrighty, guys thanks for watching